week, Dunhill Lynx Championship saw Ireland's Paul Dunn return to St Andrews for the first time since he upset the odds to lead the Open Championship as an amateur. Since then, he's turned professional and has impressed once again last week by finishing in a tie for 19th. I sat down with Paul in Scotland to find out his favourite memories of the summer and his plans for the future. Paul, it's great to see you back here, especially back here at St Andrews, where it's safe to say you made your mark on golf's biggest stage here back in July. What's it like being back here now for the Alfred Dunhill? Yeah, the course has a little bit of a different look to it. You know, the, the stands aren't quite as big, um, but it's a great setup this week. Um, everything's run really well. Really grateful to the European Tour to get an invite uh, to play such a prestigious event. And yeah, it looks like a little bit different weather to the Open as well. So yeah, looking forward to a good week. Now we've got to talk about your open week because it was just such a fantastic performance from you. Going into that week, I mean you were leading going into the final day, did you have any expectation as to what was to come? Not at the start of the week, no, I was just trying to play well. Uh, obviously goal number one was to make the cut and then do as well as I could. Um, but it was, yeah, it, was, it was different, once I was in the situation you obviously just want to win a golf tournament. You know, It's just like playing any amateur event, when, when you get down to it, playing on the golf course, there's just more people and more cameras around. Um, it's the same game though. So yeah, looking back on it, you know, it was a great week, but it was a disappointing uh, way to finish it. But hopefully I can do better next time in a situation like that. And just going into that final day, you know, you're an amateur making your open debut, leading on top of the leaderboard. How did you sleep that night? What, how, how did you feel Grace. when you woke up? I, I slept great. I, I never usually have trouble sleeping. Uh, the beds we were in were lovely. so. Um, when you're on the course, you have a bit of adrenaline going, especially with the crowds and the camera, and I was playing well. And it's, it's like any time you have, you have adrenaline, it might be in a football match or anything, as soon as you sit down after, you just collapse. So I was gone pretty early night, slept the whole night through, so I, I slept well, but you know, with late tea time, you have to do some things to kill the morning. So I uh, just hung out with the family before I went out, and just what I did every day, really. You know, it, nothing was different, I just didn't play as well. It was great here because I had so many people that I knew come over to support me from Ireland, so it felt very much like a home crowd for me. The, the crowd didn't make me any more nervous, you know, it was cool because every time if, if I made a four foot putt for a par, you know, they went bananas. So um, it was easy to keep the energy levels up because you knew if you hit a good shot, you get such a great reception when in the, in the odd amateur event, you have two or three people watching. Well, you should be very proud of your performance. And another highlight of this year, I'm sure, for you was the Walker Cup. You brought the trophy home for Great Britain Island. Just tell us about some of your highlights for that week. Yeah, it was a great week. I felt like every match I was in was really close. Three of my matches went to 18. Um, it was it was a really good standard of golf. And Lillam's a really difficult golf course. You know, we had a great team environment all week. Uh, Nigel Edwards was a, a brilliant captain. You know, he's very inspiring. And it was two great teams, really. I mean, the Americans had us in, in world rankings, but we had the home advantage of, of a course that we knew. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a good week, a lot of great standard of golf, and luckily we could get the momentum at the start and ride it out for the weekend. What do you think the team environment does to your game in terms of taking it to the next level, perhaps? I don't know. It's, it's very different playing as part of a team. Um, it was great, you know, there's five Irish on it that we travel everywhere together, so... Uh, and then we, we knew the other five really well, we all got on well, so there was no even adjustment period. You know, as soon as we arrived, everyone was getting on like friends. When possibly, I can't speak for them, but maybe the Americans needed some time to gel together. So, uh, yeah, we're definitely friends before we were teammates, and then teammates make that bond a little bit stronger. So, I guess just the, the whole experience of playing in front of the crowds is quite, quite a pressure packed environment. So, that'll hopefully stand me in, in good stead moving forward. But every week, you know, you got to play the golf again. Golf ball doesn't know what you did last mm -hmm. week, so i uh, just going to try to keep working on my game, getting better. Well, we now see you here at the Alfred Dunhill, and you have turned pro as of last week. I mean, we all know why you turned pro, but for you, what was it that made you make that decision just last week? I made the decision last year that I was going to finish my uh, final year of college, play the summer as an amateur, hopefully make the Walker Cup team, and then uh, turn pro after. So I, I, after the Open, I didn't see the, the point in six weeks is a turning pro six weeks early kind of foregoing a, a, a dream and a goal i've always had to play walker cup so i was really happy to do that be part of a winning team and now i guess it's just keep going with the plan hopefully i can play well moving forward and and get out here full time and just going into next year what is your plan now to make sure that you're in the best position to play in the best tournaments that you can next year i don't know it's hard to know because you know this first year really my schedule is not set in stone 
Um, so I'm playing the next three weeks on tour. Uh, hopefully I can do well. If not, it's not the end of the world. You know, I'm not putting any more pressure on myself than I need to. And if I don't do well, then second stage of Q School in, in November. So there's different options for me, you know. So, but uh, ultimately, it comes down to how I play. So just going to take it week by week, really, and, and see where see where I go. And final question: Where would Paul Dunn like to be in five years' time? Uh, hopefully, I can be contending to make a Ryder Cup team. Um, that's a, that's probably the, the biggest goal for anyone in Europe is to try and make that team be part of a winning team. So. Yeah, I'll aspire to that, but until then, I'm just going to look at my short-term goals and try to take it week by week. Great. Well, best of luck in your professional career. It's great to Thank see you. you. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers.